So, for those of you who are just watching our previous stream, uh, let me explain what just happened. I was explaining how awesome Magic Leap technology is and how Google is interfacing reality with video games. And as I say this, D -Lake, or Sam says, yeah, but everything Google makes doesn't work properly. And as I tried to retort that Sam doesn't know how to use computers, D Lake got kicked out of the live stream, and then our live stream just got booted off air for some reason. So this officially, I think, sold Sam on Microsoft's HoloLens, right? <laughs> yes, it's gonna have to be the Microsoft HoloLens for me. Yeah, I yep. guess I guess we'll all be HoloLens users, which uh, eventually I do think it'll I be like. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it here first. There is something worse than having a microchip forced on you. Having a microchip forced on you that is made by Google. All right, so to explain this technology better than I ever could we'll by Dr. talking... Strange love arm. I think D-Lake has a video ready to, uh, to show us and to blow you guys' fucking mind. You got the... You got the magic leap video, D like that's the that's the gold right there. Alright. Right, Kyle, here we go. Alright, okay. let's watch this. Posted by What's Trending, okay, on March twentieth, twenty fifteen. So just like that uh, article that I started with on the previous video, uh, about augmented reality or uh, magic leap versus okay. I better not click to too many pages here. Let's just play the video. I don't want to get kicked out by Google again. Thank you. Thank you, Google. Oh, man. Is this real life? Oh, I'm not even wearing an augmented reality headset. This is really awkward now. Oh, okay. So Magic Leap, the company that's devising an augmented reality slash holographic... Tony Stark. That's some Tony Stark shit right there. Headset released an awesome video which basically pits the user as Earth's greatest badass. I mean, can we all agree that you are Earth's greatest badass in this video? And the Magic Leap is actually being funded by Google for $500 million, which I'm just kind of like, eh. So in this video, you can actually see yourself eh. scrolling through your email. She's all $500 million? Doesn't sound like eh. No eh. big deal. <laughs> I mean, what's the national debt? 18 trillion? Come on. Oh, and then aliens come and attack you, oh, and shit. you pull out, like, these steampunk guns. I want one of those. I want one of those guns, and I want one of those headsets, and I want to be the person in that video. I want to be an alien in that video. Like, I want Why did I say the life of a schizophrenic person just got very difficult? <laughs> Who magically was supposed to give a TED talk, but they backed out of the conference, so there's still a lot of questions. Oh, like, that looks tight. I want to do that right demo, there. That or if it's fun. just a concept, because we all remember the Google Glass concept video, which was very misleading. This is my Google Glass impression. Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> The effects in the video... Were Which, wait, pause really quickly. She has a very, very good point, and that's what I was saying earlier, and I haven't seen this this uh, video from them. I've only seen the actual one from Magic Leap. But yeah, like, they always make it look a hundred times better than it actually is. I think, didn't, like... Who was it that got sued for that? Was it Samsung who got sued for making their... Sh or no, it was Sony. Sony got sued because the PS Vita looked, like, way cooler in the commercial than when people actually bought it. So, like, keep that in mind. Right. All right, let's go back. The New Zealand-based visual effects company that actually did the entire... Which reminds me, I'm going to play a little bit more of this video, Kyle, so we can talk about it, but I have to tell you guys what happened the other day. Fire Lord of the Rings movies, all of that awesomeness and the orcs and the craziness... They did this video. You know, it's actually really scary. Like, this is a really scary concept because... You have to have a black desk for it to work. I can only imagine, like, if it's, like, a horror demo and you're, like, running around being crazy and then you, like, accidentally kick your dog or, like, punch your mom. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, because it's in your own house. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. It's, it's like, you remember... It's the future extreme version of throwing your Wiimote through the TV. I don't know about you, but anything that could make a Sigourney Weaver alien come down my steps is something that I would purchase. Yeah, I'm going to buy that shit as soon as I can. But I said that about Google Glass, too, and I totally don't want one of those anymore. <laughs> I would be willing to try that. I didn't see what the big deal was. I know somebody who bought one, and they said it sucks. It's not, don't, they told me, they're like, don't buy this. 
<laughs> All right, let's go back to this uh, this girl whose uh, ethnicity is very yeah. indeterminate. <laughs> yeah, in fifty years, in fifty years, more Muslims than anything else. But uh, you know, I remember Time Magazine articles that said we'd all be brown people by now. So I don't know what. To do. I think we're all gonna look like her. We'd all be mixed race, race uh, ethnicities by 2015. Yeah. Last I heard, we don't know. We don't we know. All part of the I know. I'm saying Let's white nation. Peter Molligia says, shame there's a focus on action. Why not make a concept video where someone is having a tough time at work, and so they create a little virtual person that gives them a meaningful reassurance. Pause. Wait a yeah. minute. <laughs> what has this done? What I got? Uh, yes. What has this done to the world of porn? I just thought of that. Good question. I was I was planning on getting to that. All right. Let's all right. <laughs> let's finish this video off, and then we can talk about holographic porn. There's my reassuring smile. So you guys tell us what you think in the comments okay. below. And, and right. comment on this video too, Kyle. This is what I was going to say before we got kicked off the air about how I like to look in technology for the benefits that other people look at as a negative. Like, after Columbine, everybody was saying that, you know, because of violent video games, people are going to shoot up schools and stuff more, right? But I actually think it's the opposite. I think somebody who might desperately want to go on a killing spree potentially can go play Grand Theft Auto and get it out of their system so that they don't have to go act those things out in reality. They can get their aggression out elsewhere, which is a positive. Then people don't die. That person has an outlet. In the same way, porn, I think this is going to... There's Porn drives markets. If it wasn't for porn, there would be no internet. That's what got companies to invest in it because there was a spike in internet usage uh, across the world right around like 3 p.m. This is actually true. There was a spike in internet usage. We're talking like early, early 90s, like 91, 92, 93. Internet usage spiked around like 3 to 4 p.m. And the reason that, and, and what that did is it caused companies to say, wow, people are actually using this, people are actually excited about it. we're going to throw millions and millions of dollars into researching this technology. That's how we get to the internet that we use today. The reason for that spike in usage around 3, 4 p.m. is because kids would get home from school a little bit earlier than their parents got off work. And in that little window between them getting home from school and their parents not home from work, they downloaded as much porn as they possibly could. And that's the reason that we have the internet today. That's actually true. And in the same way, the porn market will drive this technology because if you have a choice between sitting on your laptop with your laptop on your chest watching a POV video or putting on these glasses and actually seeing, uh, you know, name your favorite porn star actually like sitting on top of you and you can pretend that it's really happening, people will pay more for that like actual real seeming experience. And the other side of that, and I hey, believe that gives this, a whole new definition to a we. <laughs> for the technology that's going to come out to supplement the glasses, you know, that like the the mechanized flashlight that simulates what you're seeing on your on your piece. But how many people who like are socially inept and can't get a girl and like no girls like them and they're sitting in their car shooting videos about how no girls like them and guys are assholes and their BMW about to go shoot up a sorority in California. How many of those dudes can have virtual hologram sex, and now they're not going to stab their roommate in the temple while they sleep. Well, no, see, it, 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 it's broader than that. that Christelle and I ha have wonderful uh, roles in the hay. There is no way that her and I both would not try the glasses porn. You would have to. Curiosity oh, yeah. would make it happen. It would happen. It would so happen. Yeah, you can have a virtual three-way. That could be fun. Babe, or like, babe, can you just record some virtual... Yeah, I, I'm going to be out of town, honey, but don't worry. I recorded some holograms And, and, and there'll, there'll be these great sentences going around which you don't anticipate. Like, my girlfriend and I had a three-way hologram, and everything was great till we got a virus. <laughs> oh, that's... Oh, can we get a butt on <laughs> Sam? That was a good one. <laughs> like, so... And eventually, this technology is good enough. 
you won't even need like an actress to film it. You'll just be able to make like like synthetic, like using somebody's face in a generic body type, like in The Sims. And so like your girlfriend's like, "Ew, that's disgusting. I'm not doing that." Like you're not you're doing it in the glasses. <laughs> All right, Kyle, Kyle, Sam, Kyle, Sam, <laughs> have you seen uh, the new PlayStation Flow? No. Here, check this out. The only PlayStation I've ever owned is a one. Innovative ideas and technology. Here at the wearables division, we're working on ways of bringing the PlayStation experience to all areas of your life. Building on the recent success of remote Ooh. play and chair play, and not to mention Project Morpheus. A hot chick that you can obviously tell is pretty much white this time, Kyle. We're about to take gaming to a deeper level. Can you water Wait, pause really quickly. Pause. Can you go back and replay that entire beginning part within your mind that she is talking about VR porn? Like, it sounds like she's being very elusive. Can you play from the beginning again? Now like, we got Kyle stuck. Said, everything she just said sounded like she's like trying to hint at porn. Technology. Here at the wearables division, we're working on ways of bringing the PlayStation experience to all areas of your life. Uh, keep in mind, <laughs> all D including, experience, including your porno. Here we go. Building on the recent P wet pet pet. <laughs> Remote play and chair play, and not to mention Project Morpheus. Ooh. We're about to take games. Project Morpheus. That sounds insane. Aiming to a deeper level. A deeper level. <laughs> Underwater environments in games like The Last of Us Remastered are more realistic than ever. To enhance the gameplay experience, we've developed an advanced new wearable technology, PlayStation Flow. We've created a new frontier for gameplay. We're taking gaming out of the living room and into the swimming pool. The sensors fit on your thighs and biceps. They're packed with technology. Your thighs and biceps, Kyle. This, dude, I have a pool. I'm getting excited. It captures your every movement and sends real-time updates to your PS4 with game footage streaming directly to your PlayStation Pro goggles. When you get to a swimming environment in your game, simply you put a swimsuit on. <laughs> your goggles and grab your flow sensors. Then head to your nearest swimming pool and dive right back into the action. Your movement controls your game character, and with the waterproof earphones, you get a totally immersive experience. It looks like the things okay. I have on the fail videos already were like, you, they'll, they'll put uh, glasses on somebody and it feels like they're on a roller coaster or something. That's been popping up for the last year on fail videos. Yeah, but like, all right, like, all right. For me, Wait, like, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. <laughs> I am a connoisseur of the fail video. Wait, Kyle, Kyle, say one more, Kyle, say one more thing and then it's my turn. All right, I just want to say, like, for, like, this seems really cool for me, somebody who has a pool in my backyard, but, like, for the average user, like, who's going to be like, time to get on my swimsuit and drive down to the YMCA, like. Okay, I, I have it on the screen share on my video, okay. Look, she's at the pool. This, it's good. This, this gentleman's at the pool. Uh, <laughs> okay, she's still talking about it, making it sound like porno. They have, it, it comes with a, uh, a quick dry. Uh, station that drives you off in less than a minute. Really? And and okay, <laughs> here we go. I turned off the sound, but guys, you don't even need to have a swimming pool. Watch this. <laughs> oh god. This is not real. <laughs> guys, guys, Kyle, Kyle, please note the uh, publication date of this video, April 1st. Oh, uh, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> a PlayStation <laughs> April Fool's joke! Very good. Do you like went to lunch, to go get lunch for everybody uh, at work, and uh, my manager, production manager, when I come back, he's all, hey, have you heard of this? Check it out. And he's showing it to me, and uh, I'm like, what? And I'm asking all the questions. I'm like, what if you don't have a pool? I'm going to get my bathing suit. Everything Kyle was saying. And Sam was saying, and then he's like, how much would you pay for it? So I'm trying to think how much it costs. My other coworker comes in the room, and she's like, oh, yeah, my brother saw this. He wants one, too. And uh, he, he was looking at this as well. And I'm like, really? I'm like, yeah, I guess it's pretty cool. And then they're like, April Fool's be like I'm like, what? And they conspired to, like, uh, hype it up and, and make me guess, and April fucking fooled me. 
Dude, that's a good one. Well, you, you, I, was, I wish you hadn't said it because I was about to say the reason that the swimming pool is needed is it's going to cost so damn much that only people who are rich enough to have a pool are actually <laughs> going to be able to afford it. <laughs> Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> your, your, your thoughts on that. A proposal joke, but it ties into everything that we're bringing up today about the Holo Lens, the Magic Leap, the Google versus Microsoft. The augmented reality. I mean, when I looked up augmented reality this morning, like on Wikipedia, you know when you're watching a sports game and they have like the digital lines on the field, or say the like uh, replay. Well, now now they have like a circle and like the, the directional arc of the ball and all that yeah, other stuff. Yeah. I mean, Kyle, how do you feel about that? Uh, as I mean, that's a step closer towards being able to wear some glasses and and pick up pick up your. Uh, I mean. See, part of that me, video, like, the... The video the, that we watched before about the Magic Leap wasn't on April Fool's Day, but it kind of, those two videos kind of looked the same, didn't they? Yeah, they're very, very similar, but I think I'm excited about it for the reason, like, the same reason, and, and this is the way that video games seem to be trending, like, the Wii was the first real uh, motion uh, video game, and now the PS4 and the Xbox One both do it, and the more that we get into augmented reality... The more that we get into like virtual reality, like with the Oculus Rift, the more people are moving. And like I think that the idea of like the fat, lazy video game head is gonna go away, and you're gonna see more like buff motherfuckers who are into video games because you actually have to like run around and do things to play them. Yeah. Uh, did you guys? Uh, talk it, about... it, it, it's gonna make like role playing games and things a lot of fun too. Did, did you guys already talk about the Oculus Rift while I was uh, cashed out on the previous video before this recovery video? I, I mentioned it briefly. Are you familiar with Oculus Rift, Sam? It's pretty fucking awesome. And they're talking about, they're already, there is already Oculus Rift porn. It already exists. Oh, shit. There are incredible, yeah. there are incredible games and quote-unquote experiences Hell waiting yeah. to be so, made like, for the Gear VR, the virtual reality, and it's it, it's... I mean, uh, Kyle, is that, is that what I was talking about with the fail videos, the big goggles then, and it looks like you're... I don't mean virtual reality, but they look like virtual reality goggles, but a much newer version. Yeah, I mean, these are. Here, it's can you Google look up Glass on? Plus, and they're, they're essentially trying to shrink it down to the size of a contact lens as well, Kyle. You're aware of that. Yeah, and there's already companies, too. Like, the Oculus Rift is like $1,000. It's super expensive. It's in development stage, but you can buy... It looks like an Oculus Rift, but it's just empty. There's no tech in it, and you slide your phone into it. So if you have an iPhone or a Samsung Galaxy, you just put it in, and it has not to the same like detail, but it has essentially the same technology. Your phone exists in 3D space that it's aware of. That's how you're able to download the app where you look up at the constellations and all that stuff. So you just slip your phone into it, but the Oculus Rift <clears throat> is very, very high detailed. Like, can, can you pull up a video of Oculus Rift for us, D, like, to show, like... Pretty much what it is, Sam, is you know like the Wiimote for like the Nintendo Wii? It exists yeah. in 3D space. Wherever it is compared to the Wii system, the Wii knows exactly what position it's in, in like yes. a, a, on an axis. Phones, new phones do the exact same thing. Your phone knows the position it's being held in. So the Oculus Rift is a, is a HD screen that's worn on your face with a HD headphones, and when you move your head, it knows exactly how you're moving it, and so within the 3D space of a virtual reality or even an actual filmed reality that they use these special cameras I was telling you about for, you can go into this reality, so like yeah, news okay. on the street, there's a protest, you can be there on the street, instead of watching a POV video with your laptop on your chest, you just put on your VR goggles, your Oculus Rift. And you're right there in it. And I think people I mean, are using those for virtual virtual roller coasters and stuff. And I'm, I wanted to know what else can this do? There's got to be more that this can do. Well, and I think the combination of using the VR, the Oculus Rift, with uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of like binaural sound, 3D sound, ASMR, where uh, you use like I made a joke video on my personal channel of one where like you know they have the ones where it's like you're getting a haircut and you close your eyes and it really feels like you're getting a haircut because of the way that they control the noise on oh, each yeah, side no, of your that's, head. That's something a little bit different. What what's that called again, Kyle? I, I watched that video that you did where somebody broke into your house and you were massaging their head, but you have yeah. to have uh, dual headphones so that you get the uh, immersive like 3D audio experience where. 
your brain will will pick up the sounds and, and you'll feel the sensations on your head? Is that how it yeah, works? Yeah, because your brain fills in the gaps. You just need stereo headphones and it just uses, you, you record a, like, ASMR is what it's referred to. Like, there's a ton of, uh, it, it's interesting, there's a ton of creepy chicks who do it. Uh, like, if you type in ASMR where they're, like, staring at you and rubbing your head. It's kind of interesting and it does, like, create a sensation in your brain and you essentially do it by setting up two very, uh, very sensitive microphones on either side of like what your potential thing is and the way that the two microphones pick up the separate audio the same way that your ears would it, it like your brain fills in the gaps so you combine that technology with which is a very very simple technology with oculus rift and you could make like a very very realistic situation uh, Kyle you got a view of my screen share when I put in oculus rift yeah uh, that's the fail videos Yep. One, one of the top videos, though, elders react to Oculus Rift. Those elders, the young people react on the Fine Bros uh, videos are hilarious. It already has almost uh, 10 million views. Then uh, going down to the third one, someone is doing a most realistic roller coaster with Oculus Rift, something that Sam mentioned. Um, I, I don't think we... Oh. We need to set up to play. Oculus Sexy Rift. There you go. Okay. They're already die, 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 in a die in a plane crash in virtual reality. Do we really need that? <laughs> I'm sure we the do. Oculus Rift development kit. Uh, before and after my worst jump scare affected from Oculus Rift horror. Are people having nightmares as a result of this, guys? What do you think? I just think I don't think people are going to have nightmares because of it any more than they'll have nightmares because of a scary movie. I just think it's a it's an awesome technology. My only worry with this type of technology but what if it is that people. More, but, but I mean, what if it feels more real dying in that plane crash in the Oculus Rift versus a uh, conventional movie screen? You know. I mean, I'm sure that it will, but I mean, my answer is, you know what? I take it back. People will have nightmares because your brain movies. feels the horror of that, doesn't it? I mean. Yeah, and that would be awesome. I would totally do the virtual car or plane yeah, but crash. You still know you it's fake. Yeah, but you still know it's fake. It's not going to. Uh, it's not going to. Exactly. Right. Well, Sam, you're the one that. But brought there's a ton up, of. You're, Sam, you're the one that brought up schizophrenia when watching the other. No, no, yeah, now that I think yeah, that 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 could be interesting there because you've got like demons coming out of the wall. And Kyle. Uh, Kyle, you're uh, you're, you're probably going to get married soon, and uh, maybe kids are in your future. How how do you feel about uh, and and Sam? Who knows if you're having kids soon? But I mean, how how would you guys feel about your kids being introduced to this sort of stuff? No, I I'd play it with them. You play with them. You play with them. If you had if you had kids, how how would you feel about them um, re really wanting this technology, Kyle? It's all about how it's used, like Sam said before. Like you can't assume that everything is going to be a negative, horrible uh, experience. Like it's the same with anything else. Like I wouldn't tell my kids like you're not allowed to use the internet, but I hope that they're not looking up rage porn. You know, like it, it's all about how you use the technology. And so you you can't stop your kids from like my kids. I'm probably gonna have kids in like five five years, and when I have kids, this shit's already gonna be out. I can't I can't keep them from it if I want to, unless I lock them in my basement and don't let them have friends. Because if they don't have it, their friends will. You know, like it's just part of the world now, and we have to like you kind of gotta accept that. I mean, it's getting to the point. I mean, like we. I mean, well, Sam. I mean, when we were growing up, all, all the kids in the neighborhood had Ataris and Intellivision and. And uh, called Colecchio or uh, Coleco Vision. Coleco Vision, yeah. I, I, that? That's the one I had. I had yeah. And then and then Kyle, a little bit younger. I mean, what did everyone have when you were growing up? Nintendo, Nintendo, and, uh, Super Nintendo, Sega. Sega, yeah. And then later on, like you know, N sixty four, PlayStation. I mean, so do you think that? I first think moved that, out of my own at nineteen. My friend Steve bought a Sega, and it was a big deal. Right, well, where I'm going with all this is, I mean, Kyle, I mean, don't you think HoloLens, Magic Leap, augmented reality, the virtual reality glasses, Oculus Rift, don't you think this is sort of all a natural progression? Absolutely. But, I mean, I mean, you can tell your kids, like, when you were... I mean, is this all the plan of the New World Order for a technocracy and a global takeover tech technocratic elite, Kyle? I think everything can be... 
everything can and will be used by evil people, but that doesn't mean, like Sam said, we should all have equal access to it. Like, evil people use the internet for evil shit, and then other people make kid president videos, you know? <laughs> like, people are going to use it for good and bad. There's, there's going to be porn, and there's going to be kitten videos. Like, and, and you can't stop your kids. Like, even when you were a kid, like, you're talking about, like, ColecoVision and Atari. If your mom said to you, D-Lake for Prez, you are not allowed to play any video games ever under any circumstances. You'd be like, okay, mom. You'd be like, bitch, I'm going to stay over at Steve's house tonight. You don't, you don't control Steve's house, do you? Yeah, yeah. I had, a <laughs> I had Atari, but it was like I played ColecoVision at my one friend's house. I played uh, at uh, my other friend had a television. My other friend, who was spoiled to hell, he had every single Star Wars figure, and he, he always had the newest shit. And he's like, hey, check out this new game on my brand new system called Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. Or my Mike, yeah. Fucking you know, Glass Jaw about. Jones or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I remember as a kid uh, taking a Polaroid picture of, of the TV with my uh, Pitfall high score. Like on the TV, like I had to pause it and everything. That was crazy, dude. Uh, speaking of like all this VR and like uh, sensor technology and stuff, I actually had for Nintendo for Punch Out. There was a special controller. It looked like like a like a laptop or a briefcase, and you folded it out and you plugged it in, and it had two like sensors on each side, and you would punch over the two. <laughs> And it was like one, one, you punch over one and it hit the A button, and you punch over the other one and it hit the B button. And again, getting back to like how the videos never like show you how good it's really going to be, do you remember for Nintendo, there was the Power Glove, and the commercial for the Power Glove was like so fucking good. It looked awesome. Like, did you guys ever use a Power Glove? It sucked. No. I mean, well, all about it. Let's see it. I mean, so, I was just so watching a... Was, sorry, Sam. I was just watching a video game documentary the other day, and like Nintendo's first package came with the, the Duck Hunt gun. Yes, I had it. Yes, and, and it came yeah. with a buddy robot, but no one used that buddy robot. What was that buddy robot all about? It didn't do anything. It didn't do yeah, well, then they no, came out the one fun. that did. There was the package that came with the Duck Hunt gun and the track and field mat, which was like oh, a yeah. DDR mat. <laughs> but that's all pre Wii, and then Wii came out, and then. Now they're talking about Oculus Rift, and like like I was saying, I feel like it's a, all a sort of a natural progression. But uh, Sam, I mean, and, and Kyle agrees that this might be used for nefarious purposes, but everything is, right, Sam? Always. It, it never fails. A anything that... Uh, it, from the time of the... Uh, we, as soon as we learn how to do cave dwellings, we learn how to draw porn. It's just going to be... Yeah, it was one of the first things they did when they figured out how to scratch a rock on a cave. Like... They, they drew boobs and stuff. And you know what? Are people going to sit inside and never leave their house playing with their Oculus Rift and, you know, fucking, you know, I can't think of any porn star names for some reason right now. Or maybe oh, I can, man. but I don't I don't want to say specifics because they'll give away my, my stuff. But, like, they'll be sitting in their room, like, not eat, eating Hot Pockets, possibly, and just, like, having virtual sex, and they'll forget to drink enough water, and they'll die. But, like, what's the difference between that and somebody having a heroin overdose? Do what you want. As long as you're in your room, in your house, it doesn't affect me. I can still go play soccer, you know? Indeed. So, yeah, people are going to do that. Like, fucking Minecraft is going to become, like, a whole new fetish. Like, people who play Minecraft are already obsessed enough. Just wait until it goes Oculus. Yeah, that, that are, well, yeah, I, I, role playing games will be a lot of fun, and all of the all of the horror sci fi games will be fun. Oh yeah, movies are going to be more fun. I think this is going to go into film yeah. too. I'm, None of the fat kids will be able to play uh, uh, the Grand Theft Auto because they won't be able to do the actual running around, so the uh, sales will plummet. Exactly. <laughs> or like it'll be like the fat kids are still playing with the controller and be, oh, lame. What do you want? What are you watching that on a TV? What are you, uh, eighty years old? They're gonna be, like I'm. I'm scared for like people my age and like you guys' age too. Of like, like you know how like it's always like old people don't understand stuff. Like we're gonna understand shit so much less when we're old people. Like it's gonna be so above our heads. Like the seventy year old who doesn't know how to download a new app on their iPhone, we're gonna be that like. I'm I was scared because we're, we're, we're kind of forced to stay on it just by doing the stuff we do all the time. Kind of, but Twitter's still kind of confusing. 
Oh, right. I, 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 never get any, I never got any traffic off I mean, Twitter. That, I, just, I just shut it down. That's why I went I'm to the hypo. That's why I went to the hypothetical of, of you guys having kids and how you would deal with it. But uh, an interesting uh, report that I saw that came out this week about Japan's Internet Cafe refugees. These workers forced to move into tiny dark cubicles because they can't afford to rent a flat. The documentary sheds light on those living in their lives inside Internet cafes. Now, in Japan, the Internet cafes, they have private viewing rooms, kind of like American porno shops. I used to work at one, so I kind of know. I mean, Like nudie booths. Uh, yeah, it started in the 1990s as video game cafes became increasingly popular. Now internet cafe refugees wash and sleep there in between work shifts. The inhabitants usually work low paid jobs and try to save money on rent. And uh, Kyle, I have my screen share up here and I have my video selected um, on cameraman right now. And can you describe some of these pictures that you are seeing on my screen, Kyle? Uh, dude with an ashtray eating some ramen noodles in front of a computer in like a all black room. It's a dude sleeping in a corner of an all black room. Mm -hmm. Man lays down to sleep inside one of the internet cafe cubicles, which many people have made their home. Continuing, Kyle. Yeah, sorry, I hear somebody at my door, but uh, yeah. Oh, that guy's got dual monitors. That's pretty dope. So they're just like taking these things over and living in them, like. Mm -hmm. They they pay they pay low low prices to be in there. But he's got the bottle of uh, what looks like Coca Cola cans of something that maybe could be beer. He's got his game controller, and after he gets done being on the online forever in this dark dank cubicle, he takes a little nap. Then here so here, the, here's a view outside the cubicles where they still take off their shoes. Most of the people and this guy smokes in the hallway. They can wash soap up there before they go to their low paying jobs in Japan. Jesus so how do the people who like own these places feel about it? Are they just like, well, whatever? I mean, I, I thought it would be a good idea to uh, just have a, well, a big building it, that it, just it, has beds for people and they'll pay to sleep there. You know? Yeah. It, well, they, they, this way they can't tell, like they can't prove that they're living in it. If you rent it for six hours, it'd be like, all right, well, you know, he's rented it for six hours. He, you, there's no law against falling asleep while playing a game. Mm -hmm. And so I mean, they wouldn't, the they, wouldn't, like, they wouldn't be able to enforce it. Yeah, just, just, just real quick. I mean, keep in mind this is in Japan, so it's going to be a little bit different than how we might perceive it in America. Well, but look at the comparison in America. Where would you rather live? In one of those like computer use rooms, or would you rather live in a fucking storage unit? Because we got people doing that here. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. So I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd take that internet cafe with air conditioning and bathrooms any day of the week. Yeah, and not that access, that's acceptable. Right? <laughs> yeah, not that that's acceptable to live that way, but I mean, but it Sam, sucks. Jeez, yeah. uh -huh. Sam. God. Sam, it sounds like you're <laughs> setting up your bed in the internet cafe over there. What's going on? And that, uh, uh, hold on. The, yeah, the mic stopped. On the floor, okay, crashing. Sam setting right. up his bed <laughs> right there in his internet cafe. It looks kind of dark and dank in there, like an internet cafe, Sam. So. But, like, that one picture, the one, like, where it shows the dude sleeping and there's, like, containers everywhere, I feel like that dude's lived in that specific spot for a while. Like, I feel like he's he's a permanent resident right there. Yeah, a man sleeps on the floor of his computer gaming cubicle. Internet cafe refugees have become a huge problem in Japan as men find it easier to live in the cafes. They spend most of their free time at instead of renting an apartment. Now, they don't have any pictures of anyone... Um, <coughs> getting laid in these internet cafes, so I don't really know, but it's cool. Don't worry. Eh, whatever. You know what I mean? I'm saving money on rent. I'm going to get me an apartment in Tokyo. There's a dude who lives in his car in New York, and he has a job. I watched a whole story about him. He has a yeah. job. He works online. He goes to, like, a Starbucks every day, orders coffee, works for eight hours, goes back, sleeps in his car. Sometimes he sets up a tent, and, like, once a month, he gets a hotel room and cleans up. And shaves his beard like uh, like iced tea in surviving the game. Yeah, I saw another story about a guy like that. He, he actually had a job, uh, it, but it was on the other side of the uh, states in, um, I believe, San Francisco, where, yeah, he slept in a park, but he still managed to get up, go to work, use the free internet cafes, and work his job, and then sleep in a park for a few months and shower at a hotel once a week or two, you know, just to stay clean. 
Yeah, I until don't. Gary Busey tries to hunt you. That's the problem. <laughs> There's Gary Busey. In the but always check the chamber, D. Like, always check the chamber before you fire a gun. That's the lesson of surviving the game. That's a great movie. It is a great movie. I have it on DVD for some reason, but. I, I don't see know how with, I like dreadlocks that. looking like a predator or something. Yeah, and they're like, if you can run on this treadmill for two hours, you got the job. And he's smoking cigarette butts. How much you smoke? He's all like, as many as I can find. <laughs> and then they're like, Ice T, you would make a great kangaroo man in Tank Girl. Yeah, and he did. He did. And Corey Feldman was in there somewhere, too. <laughs> Tank Girl, that's another good movie from around the same time. If, uh, Kyle, uh, <laughs> let's let's uh, shift gears into entertainment. Any movie from the 80s that, you could, that, you, that hasn't been remade that you could see being remade, what would it be? The Goonies? I don't know. That's a tough question. I mean, they're remaking Mad Max, and so I want. What about a want... sequel to E.T.? A sequel to E.T. where he comes back, and Elliot is like, it would be like, like Terminator Three, where like E.T. comes back, and Elliot's like breaking into veterinary clinics to get like pain medication and stuff, <laughs> and, like throwing bottles off of bridges and living off the grid. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, well, like, what about you? Any movies from the '80s you might you'd like to see remade or rebooted or a sequel? Uh, they you live. realize they're working on Ghostbusters right now. They right? live would be dope. Yeah. Uh, Here's the problem though: all the remakes, not it, it's like fifty-fifty. Half the remakes are legit, and other ones just suck balls. Yeah, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was good. The one with Peel in it. They live would be pretty cool. Um. If they remade, like, everybody, whenever they remake movies, have you noticed this trend, too? Black or women. They have to be black or women in the remakes. I don't know why this, like, and I'm not, like, not hating on it, but they remade Caddyshack, apparently, and they, like, just changed the name because it was a totally different movie when they did it. They made Black Annie. They made the Black Honeymooners. The Ghostbusters. Black Annie was just terrible. I didn't even see the whole thing. I've seen pieces online. It's terrible. I don't know. They live. I think is. A, I'm trying to think. What would be an Black awesome Hollywood movie? Funny. The best. The best movies to remake are sci-fi movies because, like, I don't care what you say. Yes. Like, because they're more time. They're more timeless. Black right? hole. I mean, yeah. well, Black hole. They're more oh, timeless. Yeah. You can do shit so much cooler now. Like Star Trek, like, is so much yeah. more dope with special effects. Star Wars is going to be awesome, and we all know it. As long as uh, it I'm not really think you're watching a video game. I'm not a big fan of computer graphics. I'm really. It, I, it can be annoying when they old. overuse them, but come on, Sam. Between like Muppets on sticks and like computer animating that character, I'll take the computer animated any day. It depends. It depends on the anime. I'm, it can't uh, be overused though. Like if it's all that, like this new Terminator is probably going to be way overused. Still going to see it. Yeah, I still want to see that new Terminator. And, uh, Kyle, you, I, I think you are right that it's like um, uh, there's certain movies, and, and like Sam said, maybe The Black Hole, like that would benefit from our ability to make things look more real and uh, better they production quality. I think oh, we have to be careful not to make. Oh. That's what Sam was saying. Starring The Rock. Did you guys see? Uh, <laughs> did, did you guys see the? Um, and uh, Fa uh, Furious Seven is projected to make about 125 million dollars this weekend. Um, did you guys see the SNL skit of The Rock as Bambi? No. Oh, Bambi. oh man, it's so hilarious. I'm not gonna set up to play, but everyone go to YouTube right now and look up. The Rock as Bambi SNL Saturday Night Live. It's a great skit. Well, did did you hear the big announcement about a movie coming out in 2016? Happy. Mallrats too, motherfuckers. Oh yeah. Hey Kyle, I just saw I just saw a trailer uh, the other day on IMDb called Shooting Clerks. Where yeah, they yeah, have... yeah. I've never yeah. liked any of those movies that much except Tusk. Tusk. No, but it. Yeah, Tusk was great, right? Kyle, Kyle. It's the only thing I've ever seen by them that I've really liked very much. The guy...
Uh, or the Clerks documentary, Making Clerks. They made another one, too, called uh, Finding Guido, I think is what it was called. And it's about how uh, Kevin Smith helped uh, Jason Mewes stop using heroin by going around to different toy stores trying to find Guido dolls. They're pretty good. I haven't seen... I haven't seen the Clerks one yet, but I'm sure it'll be good. Yeah, anytime someone gets someone else to uh, quit doing heroin is a good thing. But uh, but what yeah. I, I just saw it just was it yesterday or the day before shooting Clerks. I mean, I'm all who is this guy? He's supposed to be Kevin Smith, and then I started getting into it. I'm like, okay, they have a whole cast portraying the people, the actors. Yeah, and Kevin Smith is like he's like the executive producer on those movies too. So oh, it's endorsed by Kevin Smith. Oh, okay, there. You go. Which he got some shit for that, apparently, because people were like, oh, really, you're going to fund somebody else making a movie about you? And he's like, well, they want to make it, and who else is going to fund it? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> screw the critics. Kevin Smith can do whatever he wants. I love Kevin like, Smith. Like, you want to make a movie about now, me? Like, hell yeah, that sounds fun. Oh, yeah? Uh, I mean, look, if someone was making a D Lake for Prez or the Media Speaks movie, I'm sure Kyle and, I and Sam and I and maybe even Court, we'd all chip in. It would be way more dramatic than the actual happening, though. Like we, like I'd be like talk like on Skype, and Court would be like, "This means something. This is important." And I'd be like, "We're gonna change the world." And there'd be like dramatic music in the background when really it was just like, "Hey, Court, want to join this website?" He's like, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> they always like over. Court's all like, Court, Court, Court's all concerned about who's gonna play him in the movie, and none of the none of the rest of us are just like whoever, you know. And he's like. Why did you guys take out that one line where I say that one important fucking thing? It's like, Court, we had to shave the movie down to, to less than two hours, Court. I mean, come on. Like, but well, then after... to... He's all, but you like your monologue is like four minutes long. I'm like, oh, well, you know, I mean, like, I contributed more to the production. But then after the movie's done and, like, we see it in, the, in like, the, the premiere and we watch the movie and it's, like, amazing and Court goes up to the guy who plays him who played him in the movie, and he puts his hand on the sh his shoulder, and he goes, you hit the nail on the head, Anthony. <laughs> oh, you hit that nail on the head, Anthony. Hey, uh, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking Channing Tatum to play me. Uh, Kyle, who would you like to see play you in the movie, The Media Speaks? Uh, and uh, Sam, who would you like to see uh, play por portray you, uh, Sam I.B. DeGangie, on the big screen? I'd like to see Taylor Lautner play me. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Sam. Name. I already called Channing Tatum, so I don't know who you're gonna get now. <laughs> I Johnny got Depp. Lautner. Johnny Depp. Yeah, I'll go with Johnny Depp. Okay. Johnny Depp. This is gonna be an awesome movie. Who would play Court? I know that's a tough one. Hmm. Sissy Spacek. Court. <laughs> the Rock. <laughs> The Rock in the year 1770. <laughs> <laughs> Starring The Rock as Anthony Court, Johnny Depp as Sam DeGangi, <laughs> Tyler Lautner as Kyle Phillips, and Channing Tatum as Too Late for Prez. I want I want Taylor Lautner. <laughs> I don't even know who they are. That's great. Taylor yeah, Lautner. Who is Taylor Lautner. Who is that? He was the wolf in the Wolf Boy in Twilight. Oh, I, I, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you know, I what? No. Tw Twilight let me down I'm team more Tyler. than, more than I'm those. I'm Team Tyler. I'm Team well, uh, Jacob. I, I got forced yeah. into watching Jacob. that, and I knew it was gonna be a chick flick, and I was like, okay, fine, it's a chick flick. No, it is the dullest vampire movie ever made. Molasses. Oh, okay. It, it, I have never seen a movie so slow. That Did you watch the, the last one? The last no, one was pretty dumb. God, no. I'll never watch another one. Dude, it is the, the slowest film I have ever wanted to die. I liked it. I'm not going to lie. T Twilight was all right by me. I like some, oh. like I like Titanic, oh, I but okay. no, I did not. That's a girly movie, but no, I did not like I think I own, uh, I think I own uh, Twilight New Moon or something like that. Guys, uh, speaking of entertainment, um, uh, Robert De Niro... Here comes Denial. Hollywood. Robert De Niro endorses Hillary Clinton. Now, Hillary Clinton, despite the past month of email scandal, looks like it's all just fading away now. It's just all going away. She uh, recently, uh, two days ago, rented a uh, office space, two stories in New York at 1 Pierpont, Clinton Street Avenue or some bull crap. Um, but according to the Federal Elections Commission... 
by her renting that space, that means she has to announce her run for presidency within the next 15 days. I predict April 17th, Hillary Clinton will announce that she's running. Uh, there's a lot of speculation that there is a an announcement. April 20th coming. would be good. There, there, there is an announcement. Sam, there is an announcement coming from Rand Paul on the 7th. Many speculate that will be him announcing his run for the presidency. Kyle, uh, can you um, give me your best Robert De Niro promoting Hillary Clinton? Uh, no. I like I like it. You, uh, Robert, uh, Robert De Niro, uh, you, you like Hillary Clinton? The idea of Hillary Clinton for president there, Robert De Niro? Yeah. Okay. And uh, c c can you cite maybe a specific reason why you think that Hillary Clinton would make a good president? No. Okay. And but, and but she would be the first woman president, Robert De Niro. I mean, how do you feel about that? Do you do you, do you think that that would test the, the the limits of your testicular fortitude, Mr. De Niro? Uh, no. Okay. And uh, just since we're in the entertainment section, Mr. De Niro, uh, what what would you say is the best movie that you ever made? Uh, Little Fockers. Okay. And uh, Samuel Deganchi, did you have any questions for Mr. De Niro? Yes. Um, do you think that Hillary Clinton should announce her candidacy on April 20th, since it was the birth of uh, birthday of Adolf Hitler? Uh, yeah. Okay, on 420. But, uh, but, but that would mean that she uh, extended the limits of the uh, Federal Elections Commission's uh, due date to file. Uh, do you think that the rules apply di any differently to Hillary Clinton than the rest of the American population, Mr. De Niro? Uh, no. Okay, so, uh, okay, well, that sounds like a ringing endorsement. Anything else that you wanted to add about how amazing you think Hillary Clinton is? And have you ever tasted uh, her vaginal... Okay, never mind. Okay, thank you, Mr. De Niro. Do we have any theme music, Kyle, as we... As we uh, Can we get into some of some, the some same science at this point? Kyle, do we have a theme song? No, none of my shit's working right. <laughs> Can you say a theme song quickly? Well, mm -hmm. science. science. That was beautiful. Sam, science. It's the ding science. Ding. ding, 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 ding. Sam, break out some of that science. Go for it. Greetings, unsettled souls, and just in time for Easter, as I've almost gotten to the show late, dyeing my hair a shade of green. Sustainability on steroids. Organic farmer grosses a hundred k on an on an acre. Uh, this is organic food. Um, it's not um, the GMO monsters we're used to seeing, and he doesn't need all the room that everyone says he does. Listen to this. We need GMOs to feed the world like fish needs dry land. A controversial farmer in California is proving that a, ve a veritable bumper crop can be had using new farming methods that don't require GMO pesticides, herbicides, or even weeding and require 10 times less water than the average farm. The best part? He earned 100 k per acre last season without even harvesting all of his land. What kind of super fertilizer allows Paul Kaiser to grow so much food on a mere 8 acres? Lots of rotten food scraps and rotten plants, otherwise known as compost, and he uses loads of it. He uses farming practices both old and cutting edge new so well and that our yeah, agricultural specialist, there's a link to it, from the University of Cali at Davis, who have tested his topsoil, can drive a four-foot steel pole all the way through his builds. This is opposed to parts of California where it would hit a fertile hard pan in less than 12 inches. Last year, Kaiser's farm located in Simona Valley, California, grossed more than $100,000 an acre, too. This is 10 times the average for most farmers in this area, even in the lucrative wine country. It goes on that his farm is no mega farm either. Just under 8 acres, he is beating even the other large organic farms because the soil is still so damaged in other conventional and organic farms alike. He is certainly outperforming big ag methods of farming, and his unique farming practices have turned the soil into a gold mine. He doesn't plow his fills, which means a lot less work, and he uses around 10 times less water than his peers. His neighbors still run sprinklers, but he waters for about an hour a week, using almost exclusively drip irrigation. 
This means that while California is still recovering from a drought, most farmers are watering the air since most of the water is lost to evaporation. Kaiser is watering, how novel an idea, just the plants. It says many California farmers recently spent millions taking in water to save their crops, while Kaiser just made a healthy annual salary for even the most high-paid lawyers. Um, it's being sold on the black market for ridiculous prices, and he isn't paying it. So um, there you go. Just uh, You can look up the, uh, it was originally called the Drought Fighter by Todd Oppenheimer. Um, you can look up the work that this guy is doing, and it is, it's, if it would get the kind of attention that it should, it would absolutely bury the uh, lies that are leading us towards, quote-unquote, needing GMOs. What do you guys think? I think that's awesome. I think uh, anybody who's... Uh... It's awesome because he's, he's making better food, less cost, and he's making money. Like, I love the fact that at the end of it, he's making fucking money. He's making good money doing this. He's setting an example that other farmers may be forced to kind of model after. It, 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 I mean, I haven't heard about this anywhere. It amazes me that uh, that it can be kept this quiet. I bet you it's not kept quiet among his neighbors to see how much money he's making. Well, no, and I'm a big fan of, like, any technology that makes more food and is good for the environment. Like, I, I don't know why we're not investing more time into farming in the cities. Like, cities need the fresh oxygen from the plants more than anywhere else. They need the food more than anywhere else because there's food deserts. Like, why aren't we farming in urban areas? Why aren't we farming like this guy, using less water, farming smart? And we need to start using shit more. And I mean that very literally. Like, our waste management plants create, like, uh, essentially fertilizer, and farmers don't want to use it. It works ten times better than any fertilizer. It's a byproduct that we have to get rid of anyways, but people don't like it because they're like, ew, my food was grown in human shit. Like, it works. Let's do it. Let's use the human shit. Let's use organic seeds. Let's use heirloom seeds. Let's let's model after this guy. Your, your, your food's been grown in horse shit and cow shit for years. I mean, are you retarded? Yeah. Now, are, are, there any are there any dangers, though? Like, I know with uh, cannibalism, it'll actually, at, over a period of time, will actually destroy the human stomach. Will no. Our, will our cannibalism? No, well, no I, you I mean, have a, well, that's a valid yeah. point, because it's, it's human waste, and they, they have the system down pat. Uh, I listened to an entire podcast from, I think it was Radiolab, I might be wrong, where they talked about how they, they have the process down pat. They... they they separate everything out, so what you're getting is essentially only the nutrients from the shit. Okay. It's not like you're literally just pooping on plants. Yeah. I talked yeah, to a guy from a water treatment center, and he told me about it, and he was like, yeah, we do that, it works great, and he's like, but people don't want to buy it. I had a water, a rubber plant, and somebody had told me to put banana peel in the soil to help it grow. It caught a fungus and died immediately. So I have great respect for people that do this because I've killed so many plants that I have my face on a wanted poster in every greenhouse in North America. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, this year I'm going hard. I'm going to completely redesign my garden. Last year it got taken over by cucumbers, so we got a shit ton of cucumbers, but... I didn't put up fencing around it, so all my fruits and stuff were getting eaten by rabbits. So I'm gonna fence it up, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna separate it into three sections so that the cucumbers don't take over. Like it's not hard to farm. It's not hard to garden. Make your own food. I still got jars of pickles from last year. The only thing I can grow is potatoes. Just use plant it. Forget about. It. Oh yeah, and th there's ways that you can take using like three square feet. You can grow enough potatoes for the entire year. There's there's planter really? box plans online where you do it in stacks. So you plant one, you use just like two by fours, you build a little square, fill it with soil, put in your seeds, and then build another one on top of it, fill it with seeds, another you one on top. You can go like seeds. six, seven high. It's plant the tomato plant the potato. It'll grow. Just yeah. stick it right in the ground. That reminds me of a funny joke I heard recently though. Uh, how many potatoes does it take to kill an Irishman? How many? None. None. Zero. The pop-off <laughs> family. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> nice. I love it. I knew it. it was going to be tied into that somehow. I didn't know how, but that was great. You're like the Riddler. I am. Well, guys, I'm uh, crazy. Yeah. Have we done it? 
I'm feeling really good about everything. Uh, we covered a lot in entertainment. We discussed the HoloLens. We thanked Google for kicking us out off the uh, earlier show. I'm not sure how long that went, but this is the one you should watch. Talked about Magic Leap. We talked about, do you like getting fooled by PlayStation Flow on April Fool's Day? <laughs> uh, we discussed a lot see, of cool... Did you see the correct views April Fool's show, by the way, with the, uh, the multiple yeah. characters that came back? Yeah, Sam, you have too many characters, but it was pretty good. Did you guys uh, hear about Megan's April Fool's joke? Yes, I did. Congratulations on that. And, uh, Thank you, sir. What did you do? It, I was actually following it in real time. <laughs> Kyle, uh, Megan announced that she was getting engaged. I thought it was real. But apparently that was an April Fool's joke on Kyle. But Kyle had it planned to make the joke a reality. And yeah. proposed and had the actual ring. We saw that. And Kyle... I believe now you are engaged, and congratulations, Kyle. Thank you. Kyle Cole, and Megan. Thank you. I had just got this horrible flu, so I've been offline. I haven't been promoting. I think I even got a hold of D-Like and asked him to promote my April Fool's show because I was just down. Ugh. Yeah. So Sam, aren't you engaged too? I am engaged too. Yes. D-Like. Get... Pussy, if you don't. I'm divorced. Where, where's Monarch? Get on that show. I'm separated. <laughs> I'm separated long enough for her to legally be a divorce. Whatever. Come on. Wait. So you're still legally married? Look, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. But yeah. Everyone, so, make sure. Uh, make I guess sure legally. You... I guess legally, it would be yes. But you know. You Sam had a similar situation as yes. you. I think. Wow. Yeah, well, yeah. What what happened uh, in my situation was my wife and I were like, "Why are we going to spend a fortune to get divorced when we're not really with anybody? We just broke up. If one of us finds somebody we're serious about, that, and we'll go from there." And then when I got with Christelle, then I started. I went through. I should be getting papers any day. I think she already got them. We are waiting. We, we are divorced, waiting for the papers to arrive. But what's odd is the three of us. Your papers, all, please. Your papers, your papers please. please. That's what I'm saying, we, dude. All, the, all, all the really reality. good friends, thankfully. That's awesome. That you know what that means. That means that your your ex wife doesn't have bitch friends because Adam Carolla talks about it all the time. That like most people, like not most, but a lot of people, they just decide they don't want to be together anymore. Whatever, it happens. And it's mutual, and they just say, we're going to go our separate ways. <clears throat> and the woman will go to her friends to go, yeah, we're just going to get a, a, a mutual divorce. We just don't want to be together yeah. anymore. And their friends go, oh, no, oh, no, you need to talk to my lawyer, and he'll tell you. And then the lawyer gets involved, and then you have to get a lawyer, and shit just goes to hell. You lose the yeah. house, and the kids are fucked up for life. You know, you know, the, the way I did this, um, they told me that they couldn't tell me who my – if you file the papers yourself – and don't have an attorney, then you have to keep filing them every time you make some kind of an error, but it doesn't really cost you anything. Well, well it's all it's I, all made much easier online now. I, I I couldn't find out. No, this was interesting. I couldn't they wouldn't tell me who my magistrate was. And then the secretary made a mistake and said, We cannot tell you who she is. Well common <laughs> sense says there's only so many female magistrates. So I just left the message on the two that I saw that had something to do with family court. One of them called me back and immediately had answers because I <laughs> legally tracked her ass down. So awesome. yeah, I mean it, it, it's 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 odd. The, the divorce court, the, the, they can hide things from you and it's legal and it's really odd. It's, yeah, it's Doctor Drew. Every other court. Doctor Drew. They do the everything they can to make you want to fight. My wife yeah. and I are like, no, we don't want to sign any of this. Yeah, Dr. Drew did a whole documentary about it, about how, like, the old saying is absolutely true, the lawyers win. But they makes my engagement conversation into divorce. That makes me feel good. You did that. <laughs> Actually, it was you that did that, Kyle. I did. I did it myself. Actually, Kyle, I do believe it was you. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, even, uh, like, I was at work, and my coworker and I, were, I was like, whoa, Kyle's getting engaged, and then it was like an April Fool's prank, but then it turned out to be real the second time or whatever, and I'm like, oh, it looks like it's really happening. And uh, she was like, oh, that's great, my, my coworker, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I mean, 
I really love Kyle, you know. I mean, but I don't really feel like I, I, I could be the one to talk him out of this. But you know, I'm like, I still, <laughs> I still give my friend a hard time. I'm like, dude, you were right there. Like, how come you never said like, don't do this? No, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, you know, uh, like was kind of hoping you were gonna ask him, Kyle. You know, my ex and I have a have a still have a great relationship. We have kids together, so you know, I, we have a great relationship as long as she gets the child support payment on time. <laughs> <laughs> if the money is, well, if the money is late, then I just go back to strictly being the asshole that she left for a good reason. But if the money <laughs> is on time, then you know, do you like you're a great guy? You're really providing for your children and stuff. I don't know. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> well, you might. I don't know. It's a possibility. You might get a chance to go to the wedding. Do you like? We're doing a destination in California. Uh, is a possibility. Yeah, send me an invitation wherever it is. I'll be there. Hell yeah. Yeah, I made, it out to, I made it out to Chicago to film our movie, and I mean, what's more important, filming a fucking movie for InfoWars or Kyle getting married? It's you getting married, buddy, so, I mean, maybe I, I won't buy... I to disagree. I probably won't buy Anthony Court a ticket this time, but, uh, <laughs> but, but I'll be there. That's, that's where that child support money went. <laughs> I know. How come the child support was late? Because you had to go to Chicago. Come on. <laughs> All right, guys, more? I think you're... I think we're good. Let's wrap this bitch yeah, up. Yeah, we got way too personal at the fucking end there. <laughs> it's Happy okay. Sunday. Nobody watches till the end. Look at the stats. I know. <laughs> Happy Resurrection Sunday. As I was show. like, oh, we have zero viewers. I guess I can talk about it. <laughs> Which I learned today is probably, I relearned today is probably historically a week after when so. All right, Sam. So like yeah. Sam, where can everyone find you on the internet? And they can email you at hotmail.com still, is that right? Uh, it's all, always, because it was, it, was it was the first site I ever went to that doesn't crash. It's always there, and nobody nobody bothers it. Uh, if, nobody, if you want to find Sam, go on the internet, go to uh, 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 some, go to uh, uh, a website, buy it. Anywhere but Tumblr. You know, anywhere but Tumblr. You can, yeah, I, uh, YouTube.com slash the correct views. I have joined Tumblr. I understand that I am the only person on Tumblr. There is nobody else on Tumblr at all. So if you go to Tumblr, it seems that you will find me. Correctviews.tripod.com. Um, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> WordPress.sam uh, at dot com. <laughs> now, uh, Kyle, where can people find you online? Uh, in their computer. Uh, put your computer, type in uh, the Media Speaks, uh, click... The first thing that comes up, it'll probably be me. It's okay. not hard. Just type the media speak sound. Dot com on Facebook, Twitter. Not, not Instagram. Tumblr. We don't have an Instagram. We don't have a Tumblr. We don't have a. If people you know. if people stumble upon, which is another website that I'm sure Sam is on, stumble upon. Uh, Kyle, if people happen to stumble upon Nose Hair Five One Five, should they? Who? What's up with that? Yeah, click on some of that stuff. I'm not responsible if you get offended. But mm -hmm. that's a thing that you can check out the walking board, my my Walking Dead spin off series. I am I can be found on the internet by typing in David Lake and looking for the Captain America shield. You'll see down here. But a strange and interesting fucking thing happened to me last weekend. Uh a guy commented on my page, his name is Divad Ikal. Yeah. Is David Lake backwards. He's like, you're Bizarro. He's like, we have the same name, but I'm like, Bizarro D Lake. I'm like, what? D he has no beard and like a mullet. Yeah, he, he, he's Croatian, actually. And he speaks a whole different language and everything, but we have the same name. But when I commented on his page, on the YouTube, it says David Lake, parentheses, D Lake for Prez. I never entered that information. Okay? I never said that. YouTube and Google did that on their fucking own accord. They said, oh, David Lake is also D Lake for Prez. They're the ones that did that. How dare they? Tell me, like, if they were like. <sighs> never mind. Sam, you already lost your Facebook because you don't use the, the right name. I mean, no, I, I refuse. I, refuse. I, I won't go back on Facebook. I'm done. 
I'm actually friends on Facebook. I, I, I'm with, technically like, on there only for the band, but then I have to log into somebody else's site. Yeah, they're they're exposing me as D-Life for press, but I don't mind because I am. Fuck it. If you look on Facebook, like me and all the other Kyle Phillipses in the world are all friends. I'm friends with all the other Kyle Phillipses. And like oh, sometimes the swimmer, the swimmer guy and the other guy. Yeah, one of them just started a fitness page, which I can't find at the moment. Look, uh, I wanted to promote it. Look on my lower third. I just switched to D like for Prez there with the kit, little kitty cat. That's uh, um, uh, that, yeah. before we, before everybody logs off, make sure you go to uh, uh, youtube.com slash the correct views. I did a, uh, a an April Fool's show where the entire uh, news broadcast is all real news delivered by fictitious people. And I only do it on Halloween and April 4th. So. Yeah. That's enough. Everybody should watch it. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Like, everyone check that out. All right. I think we're good. Bye. Yeah, check out a report I did last week about uh, did Harry Reid really uh, get fuck himself up with the exercise equipment and then I saw a report last night that his brother probably came over to the house and beat him up and then went to an AA meeting and told everyone about it but anyways alright guys great show awesome Ooh. I'm looking forward to some HoloLens porno tonight some VR some VRP virtual reality porno 